Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Nistro. We are here today discussing Raid Raptors, which surprisingly did a lot better than I thought the deck would do going into post Phantom Nightmare. The new support is surprisingly competent. Rising Rebellion Falcon is crazy and the fact that you can summon after resolving an Ultimate Falcon is great for the deck, right? The the deck becomes almost like Sprite where when they summon Gigantic and it's like, well, if you don't nib me now or forever hold your peace for the rest of the turn, Raid Raptors is just one of those decks that just starts and just does not stop. It's not bad enough that they can basically Calamity lock you during their turn using this piece of shit card that I thought should have been banned years ago. They can also do it during their turn too and they can set up multiple towers with it. And the reason why I didn't really respect Raid Raptors for the longest time is because I felt like Kali Yuga was the only reason why the deck was good. Like, yes, there was, you know, plays outside of Kali Yuga. I know you use one of the rank ups to make like Cyber Dragon Infinity. Satellite Cannon Falcon is is cool. It can like uh, Harpy's Fetter Dust or your opponent. The fact that you kind of get free access to this card thanks to this stupid thing, which is not only Calamity, but is also a heavy storm quick effect. So it's like if you're playing a deck like Labyrinth or like Dynamorphia, let's say, and you face off against a Calamity lock, like, oh, you're like, cool. Well, at least I can still set some cards and just play on the opponent's turn. Kali Yuga, that's not a thing. You're not you're not making it to end phase with anything on board because Kali Yuga is board wiping you. And then they also usually set up, but at least before this uh, sequence came out, they also set up, you know, the Phantom Knights Link Monster, Link 3 to like pop cards. So if you tried to summon a single monster, like they would get popped as well and you can't activate. 90% of the cards in the game would not be able to activate or, or play around situations like this. I just had no respect for this card. And I know this is kind of weird coming from a TG player who just made like two fucking videos about how to calamity lock people through hand traps. But here's the thing that that's why I've been, you know, pushing Cosmic Blazar so hard. And then if you guys saw my post the other day, there was someone who topped the TGs with no calamity in their list. So the deck works without calamity. Uh, TGs work without calamity. And now, as you can probably guess, the reason why I'm making this video is not just because of this Castura Raid Raptor deck doing top four at a remote regional with around 100 or so people in it, but because there is actually a top 16 regional Raid Raptor deck. There's no Kali Yuga in this extra deck at all. It's very much you focusing on engine. As you see, he has triple Y Strix, triple four Strix, double Raiders Knight, Brave Strix, the new one, Arc, Arc Rebellion for like OTKs. And then he has his Falcon. So Arsenal Falcon is still pretty strong. Um, especially like if you look at his cash era list, right? Like he's playing 48 cards. And the reason why that even works is because Fenrir is a starter for the deck. So you can special Fenrir, normal Rise Heart, and then overlay into Arsenal Falcon, which summons a level four wing beast from deck. So essentially you have an extra seven starters in deck, right? Cause the three Fenrir, the one terraforming and, and the three field spell. So you have an extra seven ways into a starter. Thanks to Arsenal Falcon. Um, being able to grab any raid raptor out of deck basically double rising rebellion falcon is actually kind of crazy you summon one during your turn and then you summon another during your opponent's turn and then they can uh board wipe your opponent and then they can inflict damage you could to, to the combined attack of all monsters your opponent controls both rising rebellion and ultimate falcon cannot be like are completely unaffected by card effects i really don't think there's an easy way to beat both of these at the same time because they also have a searchable negate trap now um so you guys saw how i was talking about um the sinful spoils silvera um this is basically raid raptor's version of that if you control raid raptor or if you control raid raptor exceed basically you target a face-up card your opponent controls, or if it's just a regular Raid Raptor monster, you target only monsters. But since you could, could control and exceed, you can stop basically the evenly matched. You don't care about Lightning Storm because you're unaffected. You don't care about Fetter Duster. I mean, I guess you would care about Fetter Duster because that would break this card. Unless they have multiple board breakers on, like on top of the evenly. So they need evenly plus another board breaker to get through this these falcons are going to be staying on field and the fact that it's not just like one towers but it's like three of them and like rising rebellions have 4k attack ultimate falcon has 35 it's really tough to like beat over these as well like decks aren't just like sitting on monsters with over 4k attack like it might you may have 
like an axis code or something but uh, your ability to like deal with like a rising rebellion falcon or something may not actually do you well so there's some really interesting combos in this uh deck as well because it's like the deck has so many starters now thanks to the new support from like bloom vulture to uh nor lanius to tribute lanius so I think it's just really interesting what the deck can do now, and I'll leave a uh, link in the description and uh, comments below to this deck profile so that you guys can learn for yourselves how to play Raid Raptors like this because it's very interesting, right? Like he's using the Fuzzy Lanius and a lot of people stray from the Fuzzy because it, it keeps you locked into Raid Raptors. But if you look really closely at his extra, it's all Raid Raptor, right? So these are all the Falcons, the high level Falcons. And then if you look at the previous ones, it's like Y Strix plus four Strix plus that. Every card except Arc Rebellion is treated as a Raid Raptor because I believe Raider's Knight is treated as a Raid Raptor as well. So you get a lot of utility off of just relying on the Raid Raptor stuff. And I'm really happy these guys theoried this deck out. Shout out to, to these two guys for getting Raid Raptors to the top of like a almost 300 person event. Th th this is this is the event that they did well at. And so Fire King took most most of the top eight. But you know, you got Cash, Ubell, Virtual World, and we're, we're going to go into those in another video if you haven't seen it already by now. Eight rounds, getting to top 16 within eight rounds, that's like maybe a draw. I don't think that's a loss, like being in like that high. Maybe it might be just like one loss, no draws, or either one or one draw, no losses. It's 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 one of those two. But yeah, I definitely recommend checking this video out, checking out the combos, because look at this fucking end board, right? Like this isn't even the full turn, and the fact that they get to go like into multiple four strixes, they they really do a good job of like explaining how everything comes together. Check out the deck profile in the comment section below. This has been your boy Nistro talking about raid raptors. If you guys want me to cover raid raptors more. I definitely could uh, do a deep dive study into this deck if you guys want me to really break it down for you. It seems like these guys already know where to go. Also, uh, completely uh, th thrustable side deck. That's another cool thing. For at least this guy who won the r remote regional, I, I just thought this was a really cool idea, right? Because you have your dark holes, which is kind of weird. I I, I don't know what the dark hole is, is a tech against at the moment because... I understand you have the Falcons, but like Raigeki is also a card, so I don't know what Dark Hole's stopping because this doesn't stop Puppet, so I'm not too sure. Unless there's something like I'm forgetting, like something really obvious that I'm forgetting. I'm not sure what Dark Hole stops, but everything else looks pretty good. This has been your boy Nistro here, signing out.